Special thanks to the people who have made the production of the American Health Journal possible. Toshiba Medical Systems, providing physicians with imaging tools to improve diagnosis since 1914. This program has been presented in part by Ledesma and Meyer Construction. Building for a common vision. And generous assistance from HF Healthcare, serving the hemophiliac community. The American Health Journal, bringing you the latest information on medicine, psychology, diagnosis, treatment, and prevention. Major medical advances are made each week, and each week the American Health Journal keeps you up to date. Welcome to another special edition of the American Health Journal. I'm your host, Roger Cooper. On this program, we'll have the opportunity of visiting Cerritos College Culinary Arts Program to learn how they've integrated healthy cooking into their curriculum that's proven to be life-changing for their students. We'll also speak with instructors, including the chef instructor, to learn about how this course prepares their students for entry-level positions in the restaurant and hotel industry, and even inspiring many of their graduates to become future restaurateurs. All this, plus some healthy and tasty recipes they'll tell us about later on in the program. Now, on the American Health Journal. Cerritos College has been training students in the field of culinary arts for over 25 years. This long-term commitment has given the culinary arts department a strong reputation for quality training throughout the restaurant industry. Their department chair and chef instructor Michael Perini discusses the healthier approach to cooking that their students are now fully skilled in preparing. I've been teaching for 18 years and I've seen the introduction of the Food Network and the glamorization of our industry. When I first started teaching, I had to beg people to come into the industry. I had five students my first semester. With the Food Network and uh, Emerald Lagasse and everybody else that is part of that whole network, it has helped us a lot. Uh, I do not have to do any advertising, marketing for my program, and we still, unfortunately, have to turn away 20 to 30 students a semester. A culinary school is a place in America, specifically, a little bit in the European, that has taken a traditional apprenticeship program anywhere from six to ten years in length and condensed it down to a one and a half to two year intensified training program with a certificate with degrees. Um, and that's the summary of a culinary school. What it is to me is a vibrant, exciting, fast-paced environment that gives a very quick shot to a group of students that are interested, excited for the food industry for some reason, whether it's a food network, a grandmother, a grandma, a grandfather that they cooked with as a child. It gives me a year and a half to get them as many skills as I possibly can within a year, but mainly to give them the skills to be able to go into any kitchen and get a job and to hold a job in that position and also to build up the confidence and motivation. Uh, confidence, I think, is the key to what culinary schools should be giving them. I still fight healthy cooking in a commercial setting. At home, I've in instituted it throughout my house. Commercially, I was trained French. I was trained French traditions uh, with an Italian background, and the French tradition is not healthy. It's just simply in moderations. Uh, we have much more obesity than the French do, obviously, but it's portion control. Commercially, I still add a lot of butter. I still add a lot of fat. Uh, I, I experiment with my customers quite often. Uh, with light, healthy cooking, high, light and healthy dishes, we put calorie contents, and I typically find they never sell them. If I tell them it's healthy, they will not buy it. If I do not tell them it's healthy, and I make it appear to be not a healthy dish, it sells really well. So um, there's kind of an irony of it all. Um, we have Weight Watchers on this campus. We have all kinds of different weight loss programs that I've seen over the years, and they've always wanted me to put a four or 500 calorie dish on the menu, and I refuse, absolutely refuse, because I know that's the least selling item. If I earmark it as healthy and low calorie, nobody will buy it. If I make it appear to be high calorie, high quantity, high carb, high starch, then they will go all over it. I just don't have to tell them it's a low calorie item. 
we have made changes in the United States with food, particularly the last five to seven years, and the way we process, the way we use chemicals to harvest our foods. Nowadays, it's changed quite a bit. You're heading hydroponic farming. You're getting um, a lot more areas dedicated just specifically to organic farming. So the well water is not contaminated. The soil is not contaminated. So they're going in fresh and natural. I think it's become trendy to go to Whole Foods Market and buy one bag of groceries for $200 and get your little cloth bag and carry it home. I hope a trend stays to be the norm. I hope it's not just a trend. I hope it doesn't go away. Like most trends uh, with food, you tend to watch them keep an eye on them and see if they stay. And if they stay, they become a cuisine. If they go away, then it was just a fad and you just go on to the next thing. Healthy cooking, healthy eating, I hope is here to stay. I think the biggest problem we had in America was in the 80s. Now uh, we removed the home economics out of the uh, middle schools. I remember going to home economics in the seventh grade, seventh, eighth grade, learned how to sew a backpack, use a sewing machine, and learn, learned how to make breakfast, uh, make soups, stews, and uh, sometime in the 80s they dissolved all the home economics classrooms so people are graduating, becoming adults, without ever knowing how to crack an egg, cut a chicken, uh, make a roast, make a meal for themselves. So they rely on fast food, they rely on convenient foods, uh, microwave burritos, A and PM. The big hang up now is we've got to get our portion controls back in line. Uh, the quantity of food we eat in America is just staggering. Uh, you, you go to Europe, you go to Italy, an entree doesn't weigh seven pounds. Uh, it's a small portion of food and it's enough. It doesn't stuff you. Uh, but it fills you up and it's plenty of food. And it's going to take a while for Americans to shrink their stomachs, shrink their eyes. The organic's a good start and healthy foods, a little more less, less cooking on the foods is a great start, but quantities of foods is where we really have a problem in, uh, in America. With the way health is going, uh, the next generation coming in is supposed to be the shortest lived generation that we've had in a long time. And I contribute it to our food and the way we've contaminated all of our food, our soil, and our water. In 10 years, healthy food in 10 years will level off to a point where I hope it's not a trend, where it's a, a staying power, where it's going to stay around for 15, 20 years. I hope we can s resolve the psychological issues that we have with food and comfortness of food. Comfort is a survival thing. It's not anything else then it gives us energy it's like putting gas in your car you can have it taste good or you're not but either way it needs to be healthy quality good food coming up we'll have more on the culinary arts program at cerritos college need the latest news on the treatment for depression addiction or sleep disorders now you can go online at americanhealthjournal.com thousands of videos straight from doctors the Culinary Arts Program at Cerritos College is a combination of strong academics and applied knowledge through hands-on applications. This includes fine dining, cafeteria style, banquets, and catering operations that make for a well-rounded experience. We spoke with instructor Amanda Ayton about the goals for their students. Culinary arts students are very passionate uh, when they come into this program which does make it a lot easier to work with them because they all have the same kind of common goal and ground. So it makes it easy for me as an instructor to uh, help them and guide them because we all have the same goal together. And my goal is to help them achieve you know, greater success in life and in this career where and the students are ex excited about that as well. The students in the program are very focused on what they're doing. Uh, very driven. They all have the same uh, common goal uh, for their careers, being in culinary arts, and they are very passionate when they do come into the program. Culinary school is culinary school. I love everything about it. Like the way, especially here at Cerritos, they, te they teach you really well. They explain it in detail to the point where like it just snaps in your head. You know, um, I think my favorite right now would be um, fabric fabricating. 
It's um, like deboning chicken or breaking it down into like its portions, legs, thighs, brass, wings, or like um, fabricating um, a whole pork loin. Like we take the ribs out, we take the tenderloin out, we take the sirloin out, and then portion it and give it to um, whatever station needs it. So I think that's like one of my favorite parts of the culinary school right now. Some of the culinary art students are very health conscious. Uh, I think over time through media and uh, j journals and everything that we've learned that you know eating healthier is going to have a better lifestyle. So it's becoming more of a trend now because customers come in wanting more healthy food. So we have to learn how to create that healthy food for them and also knowing what's going into our bodies as well as the customers um, has made it uh, to me, more fun, uh, being able to use more all-natural ingredients, organic, I'm leaning towards that. So it's, it's a very more in, in demand and popular. Healthy cooking, it's, it's actually a really big trend right now. You know, they're actually, um, for a whole week in the kitchen, they teach you about healthy cooking, you know, using, you know, don't use heavy cream, use non-fat milk, you know, or, you know, don't, don't leave the skin on the chicken breast, take it off. It saves about 120 calories, you know. And, you know, and today, you know, you hear about Paula Dean, you know, the, it came out that she had type 2 diabetes and, you know, she cooks with butter and that's, it's, it's tasty once in a while, you know, but, you know, in the lifestyle that we live in, we don't get to exercise as much. Healthy cooking is, it's a big deal. It's although people want to eat healthier and more organic and such, it's hard for people to un change their taste buds, what they've been used to all those years, all that fast food and greasy and fatty and still being able to find something they enjoy, but having it be healthy for them. So that's where a big challenge comes for us as instructors, as well as for the students, and then being able to cater to that population out there. Well, because of my background in nutrition, in foods and nutrition and culinary arts, um, I have that understanding that um, not everything in life is, not everything that you eat is healthy, but there are modifications that you can make that are absolutely uh, simple. And there's things in, in your cupboard, in your pantry that you can modify at home in your meals, for instance, um, like chocolate dipped strawberries. Like most people think of, oh, a delicious succulent strawberry with rich chocolate on the outside, but modify it to uh, dark chocolate. Dark chocolate is high in antioxidants and it's it's so much, it's such a slight difference, but you know that when you're eating it, it's something that's healthy for you. Also, like making a grilled cheese. Nowadays, there's so many options that you have. You have low-fat cheese. You can uh, grill it with whole wheat bread and uh, and low-fat low fat cheese, whole wheat bread, and there's a low cholesterol butter, no cholesterol butter out there. So many options now that, that are so available to you at your local market. So even even like a Costco or Walmart, you'll be amazed at the kind of things that you can find to modify any uh, diet. Many kids or even s chefs around the world, you know, they understand that you can't come up with anything new. It's all been, you know, food's been around f forever. So uh, it's a matter of just tweaking it, making it something, yeah, like you say, the taking the oil out um, and adding something maybe like a, or even like a mayonnaise out, adding a sour cream or a yogurt, something like that, that can you're just trying not to alter the flavor, but just altering uh, the calories and the fat content inside. So, and people are like certain things and don't like a lot of change. So if you can give them what they want and kind of sneak in the healthy without them really knowing it, um, then I think it's a win-win for all of us. Preparing foods for those with dietary needs, especially diabetics, is a challenge their students are prepared for. We have to be prepared for people that are diabetics walking into our restaurant, uh, we always have to make sure we have something that we can provide for them um, because it's not fair to them to not be able to find something on our menu, but we should also, because we know more about our food and our ingredients, be able to tweak things where we can make it ac to accommodate them. And so uh, even when it comes to desserts, even trying to find stuff that we can substitute um, a sugar-free dessert for them, uh, and even people that uh, can't eat a lot of, with even diabetics, the, uh, a lot of carbs, and being able to substitute that out with something that they can eat so they can still enjoy the same meals and not feel neglected from the cafe. We'll be back with some tasty and favorite recipes you'll want to try. How many servings of fish do you need to eat a week to lower your risk for heart problems? 
A, one serving, B, two servings, C, five servings, or D, seven servings? The answer when we return. Looking for the latest information on breast cancer, diabetes, healthy diets, or a new hip? Now you can go online at AmericanHealthJournal.com. Thousands of videos straight from doctors. How many servings of fish do you need to eat a week to lower your risk for heart problems? The answer is B, two servings. Eating fatty fish like salmon or mackerel just twice a week can lower risk for heart disease. Cerritos College culinary instructors and their students discuss how the trends in healthy cooking encourages the use of fresher ingredients in recipes. What am I trying to get my students to learn in a year and a half? Basic operational routines of any kitchen. We generalize it to the point where you can go into a high-end chain type restaurant and fit right into the kitchen. You can walk into any ethnic styled restaurant be comfortable in the kitchen, walk into any starred hotel or independent restaurant and feel comfortable in the kitchen. We try to generalize their education to where they're comfortable anywhere in the world cooking any type of food. The program takes a hands-on approach as students work in an actual production kitchen and operate the Cerritos College Cafe. A lot of what we do is build their confidence. Uh, I know they're good by the third semester. I know they can prepare anything that I throw in front of them, but it's a very difficult task to get them to understand and to be confident in themselves to where they know they can go and prepare anything that, that, that's put in front of them. We do a lot of mystery baskets. We do uh, blind tasting foods. We do a lot of blind menus. Uh, even today, I, I went to the appetizer station and said, give me a platter of everything. Make it nice, make it presentable, and give me a good variety of all the appetizers. And I walked away, and they just loved it. They just, they just went into it and had a great time. Sarita's students share some of their favorite recipes. The favorite um, salad that we serve here at our school would be probably the Cobb salad. It's um, romaine lettuce with um, grilled chicken, tomatoes, um, avocado, um, blue cheese, and onions. And then I usually get the salad without any dressing, so like so I could taste the vegetables, of course, you know, so to keep it natural, because yeah, I think dressing is it hides the flavor, the natural flavor of what we eat. So I think that's one of my favorite salads here at school. It's a grilled uh, mushroom goat cheese sandwich that we make here. Oh it's God. really good. First it's the goat cheese and then you put um, sun-dried tomatoes, a little bit of garlic, some salt and pepper. And then for the mushrooms, you saute them up with some onions. And then you put on some bread with some, um, some lettuce. I think I enjoy uh, making pasta dishes. Um, obviously being, being a cook and wanting to go into that profession, you, you can pretty much cook anything, anywhere, you know, um, but there's always that special dish, like you were saying, that you have. Um, I think it's, for me, it's pasta. Just being able to throw that pasta in the water, making a sauce, it's not even complicated, you know, tomatoes and uh, herbs and, you know, and it comes out to be this wonderful dish. You know, you put some cheese on it, everybody loves cheese and garlic, and you're good to go. Um, so that, that's what I like. We're running a business. We're running uh, three businesses. Uh, next year, we'll be running a fourth sit-down formal restaurant as well, too. That's what a restaurant is. A re how can I teach reality hands-on skills without telling them about money, without showing them plate costs, without showing them what a POS system is and how to treat your customers out front? By showing them one component, which is the actual cooking of the food, that's setting them up for failure. It's not setting them up for reality. I tell them the first day of school, a chef is not a cook. A cook is a cook, and a chef is a chef. A chef is a money man. He's a businessman. All of you need to have an MBA in business from hopefully a reputable college if you want to be a good chef, because a chef is about money. He's not about being creative and artistic. It feels good. It feels like I'm a professional and when someone looks at me they know that I'm a cook and everybody eats and if it's good food everybody will enjoy it <laughs> so 
I think that's the most rewarding thing is having other people know that I can feed them and they, they will enjoy it, hopefully. Well, I really enjoy cooking and it's always been something that I really like to do. And I mean, health-wise, I guess I got into it as well as that because I want to learn food itself. So I guess the more you know about food, the more you know what to stay away from and what to eat itself. Because I mean, I, I like to stay in conditioning form or I like to be in a healthy, in a healthy state. Because when you're not, when you don't feel healthy or whenever you're, you know, you feel very bloated or you feel very like just sick. So that's one of the reasons I kind of got into this. I love to cook and I love to uh, cook healthy food because for me, like cook is a pleasure. I enjoy it. And uh, also it's like, uh, for me, it's like art that you can create. And uh, also like I do different things. Uh, like, like if I learn, somebody give me like a recipe and I say, oh no, no, I can do it this way. I can switch this and it's for me, it's fun. I love to cook. Um, I think I love working with my hands. I, I do construction and I love to build things like furniture and knife skills with cooking. That involves a lot of uh, hand work and I just love using that. And to make a meal that for someone that you love, that's just, I mean, I guess that's love. Stay with us to learn about careers in the culinary arts. You're watching the American Health Journal, the show that brings you the latest information on prevention, diagnosis, treatment, and research from doctors throughout the United States. Watch the American Health Journal each week on this PBS station. And now back to Roger Cooper and the American Health Journal. Job opportunities are excellent for students who receive the Associate in Arts degree or Certificate of Achievement in this program. Graduates of this program will be prepared to work in entry-level positions of the restaurant industry. Instructor Amber Major tells us how prepared these students will be after they graduate. Usually when the kids get out of school, they are seeking entry-level employment somewhere, and we try to focus on sending the kids to a, a higher-end type of facility, restaurant, hotel, uh, cruise line, different things like that. When they come out of culinary school, you can go into the kitchen. You can be a line cook. You can be a pantry cook. You can be a pastry cook or a baker. You can work specifically, if you're working in a banquet type facility, you can be a banquet cook. Work your way up to the position of chef, but everybody starts out as an entry level cook, depending on what place you're at, you know, or what you want to specialize in. Uh, I would like to have my own restaurant, of course, but I would like to s specialize in Japanese cuisine because um, I lived in Japan for seven years as my childhood. And that's where, like, my mom, like, I tell my mom I like this dish from a Japanese restaurant, and she tries to replicate it. So I would like to specialize in Japanese food, but I want to be well-rounded, of course, in everything. Well, I eventually uh, hope to get... Uh my bachelor's degree in culinary and um, maybe work in a, in a uh, five-star hotel, get some experience, you know, save some money and open up my own restaurant. Once I graduate here, I'm still in the baking program, so I have another year to finish that. So once I get both certificates, um, I'm going to look for a job somewhere. I've been in this program. This is my third semester, so a year and a half. And after, after this program, I plan to hopefully get an internship at a few restaurants where I can learn how a restaurant is actually run. And then, well, that pro will probably take many years. And ulti my ultimate goal would be to run a restaurant where I can feed people. I work in the food industry right now, but not as a cook. So um, I like to make that transition into being a cook and um, I was going to Cal Poly for a while for a restaurant management. Um, you know, the way things are going now, it's definitely important for higher education. Uh, probably will return there to finish um, my, my bachelor's and just take, you know, things as, as they come. 
opportunities will always be there. I'm actually an alumni and I was in the program for a year and a half for the three semesters and um, you know, it was an amazing experience and um, I chose that particular program because um, it was, first of all, it was within my budget compared to the other surrounding schools in my area and I just thought it was um, an opportunity to be in an environment that's really hands-on and not just that, the instructors really uh, build a one-on-one -on -one relationship with their students there and I think it's just it's more intimate and you get to learn more from the experience opposed to other students that I've met that have gone to um, larger um, schools like Cordon Bleu or, or AI. This food is life and it's amazing and I am actually um, have a degree in foods and nutrition and I'm really interested in cooking so I thought why not bring in food and nutrition and cooking together and bring something to the, the community that, that's relevant to life. I mean, most people nowadays in the food industry is, is so big on um, marketing, things that are so easy to, uh, accessible to students, to um, single moms. And I thought, well, why not invest in my future, in, my future into something that's going to um, help the community, that's going to promote a healthier living, that's going to uh, you know, promote that. I believe you create your own security. And that's with your knowledge, and that's with your dedication and your passion. And that's how you can create your own job security. Even if you decide not to want to work in somebody else's kitchen anymore, you can take the route of personal chef or open your own catering business. Cater to small groups of people. You don't have to do it on such a large scale anymore. You can do, well, I just want to do intimate dinners for people. Or I want to do a you know, large scale. It doesn't matter because a lot of people can take that route. You can go personal chef, you can work for yourself, you can create your own menus, you don't have to be restricted by anybody. You can do whatever you want to do. We hope you enjoyed this special edition of the American Health Journal and we want to thank and acknowledge the instructors and students at the Cerritos College Culinary Arts Program for their participation that makes this program possible. If you have any questions regarding any of the topics you've seen here today, please call us at 1-800-303-3200. Thanks for watching our show, and as always, we'll continue to bring you the best in healthcare news for your better health. For the American Health Journal, I'm Roger Cooper.